want a body jail. Everybody likes that phrase, don't they? What's the first thing you think of when you read, that, read or hear that phrase, auto body jail? Sing it, sister. I want to hear your story about how you got screwed over by a shop. Well, it happens. Absolutely it happens. Guaranteed it happens. I know it happens. I've seen it happen. I know people that it's happened to. Um, in and around and about way, I suppose I have done it. Not purposely and not vindictively, but I could fall into that same category as well. Not every time, but it has happened. <clears throat> the majority of times when that happens, it's, uh, it's on account of... Uh, you don't find out until it's too late that you took your car to the wrong shop, basically, is, is what that boils down to. Somebody who doesn't really have, I don't know, do they not have a conscience? or <clears throat> I don't, They always make more money than I can do, I, I tell you that much. But um, anyways, the phrase refers to you take your car in for however much work, and uh, it winds up being there for 14 years, and you pay $26,000, and you don't get nothing. You wind up retaining a lawyer to get your car back or something. Or you break in there, you get Spider-Man to come with you and you break in there and steal your car back. I actually know somebody who went to a shop. He was having his car worked on there. It was a Mustang, a newer Mustang, a Fox body. And he saw, and I mean, there was a lot of work done to his car mechanically and stuff. He raced it and stuff. And... Uh, he went by there more than once, two, a couple of times, minimal, and his car was sitting outside. And he went by there one evening, and in their yard light, his car was sitting outside. Had no hood on it and stuff, had a bunch of motor and stuff in it, and it's sitting outside in an unfenced open yard. So uh, he waited a day or two, and then he went back there one evening with his spare keys, and he took his car back. Essentially, he went on to there, they stole it back, I guess, I don't know. Um, he couldn't get nothing out of them during the day. Just the empty promises, we're going to work on it, we're going to get to it, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, that's just, I mean, that's one example that I know of. So, uh, as I said, it's, ha it's happened to me. And generally when it happens to me, it doesn't happen on purpose. I kind of have this behind you. Right there is a firebird that's in auto body jail. Um, a lot of times what happens is... Uh, Sometimes, like right now, you, you can get in over your head. Honestly, I'm in over my head right now. I have way too much work here. Um, I find myself with too much work here because there's a 66 C10 back here, right on this side, right beside you, that uh, I've taken on. And he's been messaging me and talking to me about it for months and months and months. Well, months and months and months ago, I mean, I don't know where I'm going to be in months and months and months. So I say, okay, bring it in. So at some point in this particular month, and I'll figure it out. In the paint booth that's on the other side of you, there is a 71 C10 cab. Well, that belongs to a friend of mine. Um, he continuously over the years approaches me about, can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? I need this done, or I'd like to get that done. And I can never do it because he wants it done in, in a timely fashion, which is 100% understandable. And I've always got my plates full. My plate is always full. I mean, since 2005, my plate's full. It's been full. It stays full. It's over full. There's shit on the table all around my plate. Like, I'm a slob. I got shit everywhere on the table because my plate's over full. <clears throat> kind of roaming off topic here. Some of the biggest reasons for auto body jail. Here, let me rephrase that. When somebody says that your car, my car, his car, the car, the truck is in auto body jail, they seldom give the whole story. I think the percentages are a way higher that something's in auto body jail, and it's not really the fault of the jail. Uh, case in point, I've done it, it's happened to me, numerous different examples of the same kind of thing. Uh, you arrange with somebody to have their car dropped off, they're going to do this and that to it They're on their own before they bring it to you, before they bring it to me. This has happened to me. I'm going to tear the car down. I'll tear all the trim off of it. I'll do this. I'll disassemble the car completely, but I'll leave the doors, fenders, hood, and trunk on it so you can take that apart yourself. But I'll take everything else off the car. I will gut the entire interior out of the car. I will... I'll do the easy but ugly welding. I'll put in my own trunk pan. I'll put in my own floor pan patches I'll do that kind of ugly work so you don't have to do it so it speeds up your time on the car and then the car shows up 
the guy who has made all these promises, promises, yeah, sure, promises, predictions of what's going to happen. They didn't do shit. And I mean, they didn't do shit. It's happened to me time and time again where the car shows up and it looks the same as it looked four months ago when I looked at it. It's the only thing they've done to it is it's got more dust on it. Oh, well, I didn't really get around to it. It's not a big deal, is it? Well, no, but yes, because now that bumps everybody back and your car takes longer because it bumps you back. Now you wind up with some overlap where your car is taking longer, whoever it is, is taking longer. There's already a car there, there, that's taking longer. Now I have another car that's taking longer. You see how the domino effect happens? Everybody gets bumped back. There is the, the, the times where you will run into uh, parts availabilities. I'll supply my own parts with it. I got a guy. I can get quarter panels. I got a guy. I can get the floor pants. I got a guy. I got a guy. Everybody likes to have a guy. Everybody's got a guy. A lot of times your guy sucks, period. Or you didn't even ask your guy until it was too late. You drop your car off with me. You're going to bring me quarter panels, right? Oh, yeah, I'll get a hold of them. A week later, I asked you, how are you making those quarter panels? Oh, I haven't got a hold of them yet. I'm waiting for them to get back to me. Two weeks after that. How are you making all those quarter panels, mister? Oh, he got back to me. He can't get them. Or they're too expensive. You could probably get a better deal on them. Well, now we've been, in that example, we've been a minimum of three weeks now. And then now the quarter panel's got to come from somewhere else. Oh, well, now it takes three weeks to get the quarter panels. After you wait a week for the guy you talked to to even order them, then it takes three weeks for them to show up. Well, now there's another month. There's two months of auto body jail right there on top of the job. And then you got to tear it apart. Well, there's a week and a half auto. You, you see what I'm saying? Everything, it, it all snowballs until it's one great big ball of shit is what you wind up with. Nobody wants to eat that snowball because it's just a big bowl, ball of shit. I mean, there are the guys out there that screw you over, right? And they just want your money because they're using your money to pay for that job because they took the money for that job and paid for the job before that. Because 15 jobs before that, they took the money to pay for that job and they went and bought a Camaro or whatever. Happens all the time. Or they got their own project that they want to build and they took your money and they built their project. Well, now they can't afford to build your car. So it sits there and they got to get another car in here to pay for your car. <clears throat> I was even in a situation where I was selling a truck, an old 60s Chev truck. And the guy that bought it owned a restoration shop in another city down south from me. And he told me on the phone because I had another buyer here for the truck, but I told him I would give him first opportunity. He contacted me first. I phoned him and I said, there's a guy who wants to come and go get money and come pick up this truck. How serious are you? And if you're serious, I need a deposit to prove to me that you're serious. He says to me on the phone, uh, give me a couple of hours. I'll get a hold of my customer and I'll get a little more money out of my customer on his job so that I can pay you. Well, that's not good. Don't do that. He did that. He bought the truck, but he didn't have the money to buy the truck. And so he just took money for work he hadn't done yet and bought a truck with it. Well, that's going to contribute to auto bought to jail. I mean, there's a lot of times indecision on the owner's part or adding to the job. Adding to the job happens to me every damn job I do. I mean, a lot of times you don't know what you're getting into until you strip the thing down. And so you can have it blasted. You, as the owner of your vehicle, you can take it somewhere and get somebody to blast all the shite off of it. But uh, now I don't know what kind of condition that was in because when it comes blasted, it's got somewhat of a profile on it. And I don't know what it looked like before it was blasted. If I can strip the paint off of it, I can see where there's been shitty work done to it, where it's, you know, whatever. I just, as you clean the paint off of it, you can see what's going on underneath. I prefer to do it that way, but... <clears throat> so, I mean, a lot of times you can wind up with hidden work. That extends the job. That leads to auto body jail. Money. There's lots of times where uh, uh, in the restoration business... I mean, the only guys who make big money in the restoration business are the guys with the shop the size of a shop, uh, the size of a shopping mall, and they've got 46 guys working for them, and there's 72 cars on site. 
and they're overlapping everything and they're charging the, every every paint job that they do is a hundred thousand dollars well those guys make money and they're doing good at it guys like me and guys even just a few guys all we've done is created ourselves a job so that i don't got to get up and go into town and go make somebody else money i'm too busy losing my own money to make somebody else some money so when you come into as the owner of a vehicle a financial hiccup on it well this is costing away more than i thought well your car's a bigger piece of shit than i thought so it's taking more to do i mean what do you like why do i donate my time to you because your car is a piece of shit it's not my fault your car is a piece of shit everything that i own is a piece of shit i don't expect somebody else to pay me for it so then you get into the point okay well we're gonna have to put it on hold for a little bit while i collect some more funds for it all right well now two months later okay i got some money can we get back on it well now i'm working on this 83 corvette now so yeah i guess in a couple of weeks i can get back at your car well there's auto body jail right i mean there's so many reasons for auto body jail sometimes it just takes that goddamn long to do it like the fire burden question back there i'm doing all the mechanical work on it now i'm still referred to as a body shop but i finally got well right here that you can't see right below you there's a box that says hooker on it Ooh, hookers it is not hookers it's headers for that firebird i've been waiting for headers and i've been waiting for a pitman arm for it the pitman arm i've been waiting for it for almost six weeks i didn't know i was going to need one that surprised me everything i googled about putting power steering on that car said it's a pop it together operation you pull the manual box out and if you have this particular power box which i have you put it in <laughs> slap her back together well there's no slapping because the, 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 the pitman arm, the, the whatever the hell it is, it doesn't fit on the shaft on the bottom, on the, on the sector shaft hanging out of the box. You know that one. It doesn't fit on there. So it's taken, shit, it's taken over a month for that arm to come. Well over a month, probably six weeks now. There's the brakes. Now I got headers for it, so now I can try to piece the motor together with the headers and stuff and try to slide it into the chassis to see how bad I got a bash of shit out of those headers to fit. I'm okay with that. Auto body jail. I told him he might be able to drive that car this summer. Holy Christ, was I wrong. But, as I said, I mean, prior, com prior commitments before that held me up. Current commitments are behind before I start. See what I'm saying to you? I'm behind before I even start. Both these trucks, they're behind before I even start. It's almost the end of September. There's a dude with a Chevelle that I told can bring by in October because I figured I'd be done. Probably the 71 would be done. Well, if you've watched any of the videos, you've seen that so far that 71 has held me up for, it's been a few weeks now that I've been dinking around the doors on it because the door doesn't fit. Well, we'll get another door. Well, it's two weeks for another door. Oh, it wasn't two weeks. It wound up being three weeks. I mean, you know. The phrase gets thrown around a lot, auto body jail, and a lot of times it is not justified. I mean, something else that contributes a little bit to auto body jail is I'm fixing dents on a, what the hell is this little piece of shit? What is this thing? It's a car. This little car. I don't know what kind of car this is. What's that emblem mean? Oh, it's a Subaru. Look at that. So, I mean, this isn't a big job, but it's going to take a day and a half or so out of working on stuff to get something done for somebody's mother-in-law. So the old cookie bounces. So when you hear people using the phrase auto body jail, I mean, don't just jump up and down and start throwing daggers and threaten to burn down the shop or the place where it's being worked on. Sometimes it's the shop's fault. I think more often than not, the shop might have a part in it, but it's not entirely their fault. More often than not, from what I have seen, there's a lot more factors at play than just a shop that ain't working on your car. <coughs> So there. I guess that's all I got on auto body jail. I just wanted to explain it from the jailer's perspective. A jailer? What do you call the jailer? Ah, the jailer. Yeah, I'm a jailer. I'm a jailer. I'm not right with that. What are you going to do, right? What are you going to do? I got a gate at the end of my driveway. You can't get me. I'm a jailer. So I thought I would just, like I said, give you a little video from the jailer's perspective on auto body jail and how that phrase is kind of bullshit. And you hear it so often that some days it kind of pisses me off just a little bit. Just a little bit. A little bit of pissed off. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this. I'm not going to bother doing any videos on fixing this because nobody gives a shit.